Welcome to Show Studio. It's Milan Fashion Week. And we're, of course, kicking off our Milan discussions um, with a talk about Gucci. Um, it feels like you can't move for pieces about Gucci at the moment, pieces about Alessandro McKenna. He's literally everywhere. But I think, quite understandably, if people are really excited to have a kind of new voice, particularly in a house that I think was known for being a little bit conservative for quite a dry. long time dry it was actually really really funny so I was at the GQ men of the year awards and Elton John presents you know he uh, Alessandro won like designer of the year and Elton John presented it and was like I can't actually remember what he said but the video I'm sure will be up um, but you know fashion people are really PC they're like oh Frida Jean did a wonderful job but you know Alessandro's doing something she different. held the fort exactly really well. whereas Elton John was like nobody cared it was so boring <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah and then poor Alessandro sitting there like oh it was very sweet though, it was very, very sweet. But I, I think, true, like, people are very excited. But before we kind of delve into our discussions, I'll just let my great set of panellists introduce themselves, starting with you, Anna. I'm Anna Laub, I'm the creative director and founder of PRISM. I'm Del Choden, I'm a fashion writer. I'm Sharmadine Reid, and I founded Wall and forgot then. <laughs> You're like, I'm not <laughs> you. <laughs> and I'm here. Um, one of the things I want to start by talking about is um, there's all these kind of pieces, there's glut of articles about how Gucci's kind of like revolutionised fashion and it's changing an aesthetic and I'm particularly interested from a kind of accessories obviously mm. given prism and a beauty perspective. Do you think the kind of maximalist approach that he's ushered back in, which I think can be felt all across fashion now, mm. is that having a real sort of fall down effect? I think it was, I think it's just, a, I don't kind of discount what he's done but I think you know sometimes someone comes along and does something that no one else has done at exactly the right moment I yeah. think there was a maximalist feeling and then he came along and kind of everyone was like yes this is what we're feeling which you know is a sign of a good design of it yeah. feeling the zeitgeist and doing something that no one's done before but um I don't yeah I think it's I was personally in the think it was, it was in the air, like people were doing like a lot of clashing prints and yeah. you know, over the top pieces and I think just in general fashion, on a completely side note, it's like with online and street style, everything is a bit in your face now sure. anyway, yeah. it's changed that whole side yeah. of things, which is I guess a totally different discussion, yeah. it's kind of changed what fashion is I think anyway and it is more loud and over the top and I think he's kind of summed it all up. Mm. And, mm. Um, at the right time, maybe. I think also he's just got that, this is so personal to him, and he said that in many, many, yeah. many mm. interviews. So I think even, <laughs> many, if he did this in, <laughs> even if he did this in the height of the minimalism in the 90s, yeah. it would still kind of look like this. So I think that's why people have really jumped on it, because it yeah. feels really authentic right. to him. It yeah. doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel, it's of course incredibly commercial, but it doesn't feel like that's why he's doing it. This no. is just how he does yeah. it and how he would do it. So it's very, very consistent. And I think it's, it's one of those things when a designer has such a look about them that, mm. and now he's kind of making Gucci that look in the future, who knows where he may go on to mm. or go on to do, but this is what it looks like. And I feel like it would always look like this. So mm. part of it is timing, as Anna says, absolutely. It's, it's very much this kind of comment on all this stuff, this busyness that's being mm. reflected in the way maybe he likes um, to likes to see people how they're dressed. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's kind of all within him anyway. Mm. But I do think the timing is key because it doesn't matter if you have a mood in the air, if someone doesn't give you the option to be able to turn it into something you can buy. Mm. So yeah. there can be moods all day, but mm. as long as someone says, okay, now we've packaged this up and here it is in something that you can yeah. buy, that bit is actually really important that he's therefore distilled the feeling into a product which is what he's incredible at. Mm. The second thing is, is that although this is what he definitely is and this is what he is doing, it's authentic to himself, if it wasn't the right time he wouldn't be popping. No, like exactly, if he'd done this thing. three years yeah. ago people would be like what the fuck, give me some <laughs> chic Celine, the row, plain brown yeah. shit. Yeah. Like people are like no, do you know what, I want to have fun again and mm. I want to wear all of this type of craziness. Mm. And also it'd be time. interesting to see, like you say, it's so authentic to him. Mm. So it'd be interesting to see like what what's How he gonna he do in three it? years. And yeah. if, if this it's feeling true. isn't around in three years and people are a bit like because this is a lot, so I mm. imagine in three years people are gonna be a bit like we've had a, we need to move into another it's is not, he gonna be yeah. able to move I don't yeah. think it will. Think about every brand that has been hot right now. Like think about the Givenchy moment. 
Mm. That was a moment, do you know what I mean? It's like the designers stay the same and yeah. they are creative directors of houses because it's their unique vision. Mm -hmm. But it's about combining the right vision with the right time because I yeah. just think, if you think about every major like obsessive, I have to have that bag right now designer of the last five years. It's not been one person, has it? No. Mm. It's been like a yeah. Celine, a Balenciaga, mm. a Givenchy, yeah. and now it's Gucci. And the only thing about Gucci that to me makes it different is that Gucci has always been aspirational to the street. Mm. So like when I was a kid, no one cared about Balenciaga. Mm. That's true. But yeah, when yeah, I was a kid, true. there was a girl yeah. in sixth form, Mary, who had a pair of loafers <laughs> that said Gucci across the foot. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh my God, those loafers are sick. And I think never at any point from a street point of view, like what's what people want in the hood, in the ghetto areas, it's mm. always been Gucci. Mm. It's just that whether it's sophisticated Gucci or ghetto Gucci, doesn't matter, mm. but it's always been Gucci. Mm. So I think, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it develops from the fashion point of view. But I still think that he's making stuff that street kids, the people well, it's more logo yeah. Yeah, than that's, ever, yeah, like yeah. in a way. And I think that's really fascinating is that like, I was thinking, like, it's interesting that we're talking about how he has this really fixed aesthetic, because I do agree with that, but I remember being in Milan for that, the first show that he did, but it wasn't actually officially him. Like, it was when he was, um, when they hadn't uh, announced him. And it's actually incredibly dif different. So if you look at this, and I know they only had, like, four days or whatever it was to put it together, but it was very, it kind of ushered in all those conversations that were already happening because of people like J.D. Anderson, but about gender fluidity and, you know, all of those, blah, blah, blah. Um, which actually is so different to what it is now, whereas it's it's incredibly girly now, and I, I think it's not gender neutral at all. Like the girls look incredibly good, and like there's even a quote um, from the author of um, Lolita in the season's press release, which I thought is really really telling. Um, so I do think it has developed subtly um, over the time he's been there, and I wonder if it will continue to morph into this kind of you know. I think when it started, it wasn't as maximalist. Definitely. You know, it wasn't as cluttered. It's quite interesting to see that. that does look the same though, Lou. I don't know if it does. A Can little we bit. get that collection? <laughs> like, it's like, um, it's, it's just, just more stuff. <laughs> just more it's stuff. kind of been wrapped. <laughs> you know, it's added layers. On You're like, there's just more of it. Another bag. It's more another, of it. Yeah. But it's good. It's like there's a specific shade of pink that I'm like, that is a new Gucci pink, you could call yeah, it. It's like Pepto yeah. Bismol. Yeah. Like Pepto Bismol has never been so cool. Like yeah. they own that colour now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But it's like, what can we do it in? We've done it in a bag, a coat, a dress. Yeah. Let's do it in a cardigan. Yeah. It is super girly though. I actually think all of the people wearing it, like at parties and stuff, look like Disney princesses, yeah. which is cool. Mm. Do you know what's really funny about people wearing it at parties? I'm sure you've seen this. When there's a party where one or two people are wearing Gucci, you're like, that person looks amazing. But then when it's a Gucci party or a Gucci front row yeah. and everyone's wearing it, it kind of looks a bit strange to me. <laughs> like, what crazy. do you think? Yeah, Anna? well, it loses its appeal because it is meant to, it does have this kind of character driven aesthetic to it. Yeah. But when you have a hundred of them in the show or you see a whole front yeah. row, all of them all lined up, yeah. it's quite kind of. But it's also like this yeah. kind of style is meant to be like, offbeat, you know, yeah. individual, mm. I'm doing something different. It was like, yeah. oh no, look, there's 35 people, it's yeah. not different, it's, you're all doing the same thing. It was the one before wearing it all, all in same, one as well. Yeah, it's yeah. one look, it's not like people styling it. Also, That's what we were I thought, nobody's before. styling it. Yeah, because it's so styled up already, it's very yeah. hard to style this in another way. And I think yeah. also people who are wearing this want people to know it's Gucci. Because you mm. could go out and buy this from Portobello yeah. yourself yeah. for 20 pounds, sorry. but. You could, and it might not be as great quality, or it might not look as amazing, but you could kind of get away with the same look. Mm. But people don't want you to think it's from Portobello. Mm. People want you to know they're like they've got the yeah. thing of the season. But that's where he's good at bringing in like the logos, I think, because actually, like, I love going into the Gucci stores and you see how his aesthetic translates into like. It actually kind of reminds me of when Marc Jacobs was at Louis Vuitton, you know, how he would just change the bags by getting a different collaboration with an artist. Oh, totally. It's a bit like that, you know, this idea so where the bag is... Didn't he do the one Gucci, Gucci goes? Yeah. Also, that. there'll be, like, flowers all over a, yeah. a Gucci bag, you know, and you'll still see the double, like, the... Um, the logo coming out from underneath it, mm. the, the double G, and I think that's kind of interesting. So, it's yeah, that, that was his first collection. Like, it's restrained. 
this but is it's also, I think, I think it's just got more confidence. And yeah. probably, probably the CEOs and the owners. I was going to say, said, it's like, a business. Okay, people, yeah, they're like, go to business. The they're like, if this sells, yeah. okay, now yeah. you can do what you want. Right, at the beginning, they were like, hang on a second. And now yeah. they're like, everyone loves this, just go for it. Yeah. So he's just kind of is going for it now. I also think for a long time, people who wanted clothes that were really showy, fashion people were quite snooty about that. You know, it, fashion was very refined and minimal. And actually, I think, I can't remember who wrote it, it might have been Alex Fury or Tim Blanks. Someone said that what's good about Gucci is it makes people who perhaps weren't seen as cool feel cool because they can buy something that's embell like completely Wait, why is that embellished. Good? And because <laughs> I, but I think it's interesting it's like, that it's warm. It's not like, oh, you don't get this, so you can't oh, wear yeah, Like it okay. appeals to the fashion crowd, but it also appeals to that kind of luxury consumer who wants something that's completely logoed and completely covered in you know, embellishment and petals and what have you. And I, I think to bridge that divide, I can't think of any designer who's really managed to do that, make something that's really kind of I think, I think you've got to have you know. confidence to wear something that I mean if, you're, totally. if you really don't feel like you if you really feel like you're uncool and you're not mm. part of the gang to put a dress on like that and go to a show you, mm. that's I don't know that's but, unusual <laughs> like that's ballsy yeah, you're not a wallflower. if you can't pull it off then it, it can look stupid it can look yeah but yeah. you know, when we think of traditional kind of glitzy out there brands, you think of maybe like Cavalli or something like that. And mm. that's never been yeah. like fashion. It's yeah. always felt, and I think that's what's interesting about this is how it has managed to kind of appeal to that. I think market. most of that is because it doesn't have much sex to it. Exactly. You yeah. know, and I think it's there's other. This it's is not, kind of one of those. Oh, that's interesting. It's, it's kind of a bit, right. although it, the word, the term gender is often discussed around this label, it's not uh, in, it, in its most traditional sense sexy. Mm. There doesn't feel like there's much True. sex yeah, there. We've got Lolita, Nabokov. Right, yeah. It is quite prim and a bit twee and a bit kind of. Well, it's, it's off beat. It's like eclectic yeah. rather than sexy. It's like yeah. Yeah. Which is sides, probably. You have to be a bit. It's more about being cool than it is about I was going to yeah. say, actually, when you think of those words that we've used which is like eclectic and proper and prim, it actually looks more English than Italian maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is very much, when I see those uh, high collars, it definitely looks very, if you looked at that now, it looks far more English than it yeah. does yeah. classically Italian. But then you have the uh, shininess of the accessories, which English mm. people don't like think about in that way like mm. the have to have that little handbag yeah. that the Italian well, the crew, women Yeah, the have. cruise collection with the new campaign that was released I think this morning with Vanessa Redgrave in it is all about celebration of Britishness so yeah. he is obsessed with yeah. but they're doing it at Westminster Abbey exactly. exactly. it's yeah, yeah, so cool. cool and you it's think like it's like Glenn Lutchie doing all the imagery and I know Glenn's in America now but Glenn has an British, British yeah, sensibility yeah, yeah. and that comes through I think very much in I think you're right, it's that eccentricity yeah. though, it is... Which totally exists eccentric. in Italy as well though, but it yeah, has no, that, it so does. the two actually are It does, but it kind of doesn't, when you think about how conservative real Italians are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like when you go to Spain and you realise that the Spanish bourgeoisie all wear identical outfits yeah. as yeah. Italians all wear identical outfits. Yeah. Nothing makes me feel so happy than landing in Heathrow and seeing the first weird person <laughs> in London. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you travel, you go to New York, all the girls look the same. Yeah, Everywhere, yeah, yeah. LA is the worst. They're like identical girls. And then yeah. you come to England, you're like, yes, like weird punky girl, weird this, yeah. weird that. And it all mashes in together. It's, also, it's all tied. I know the class system in Britain is definitely not a good thing, but I think the eccentricity is also very much tied to this aristocratic idea mm. of It's Britishness. aspiration. Mm. But also totally this idea of like aristocratic people being very scruffy. Yeah. You know, the people totally. that have the most money. So West London. But it's the same. <laughs> but you know, it's really, and you see that in this, it's a lot of them yeah. look, it's sometimes the pieces look Battered. Like yeah. he's done a lot of suits, particularly last suit, well, at the men's show, which were like deliberately creased, so they looked crumpled or they yeah. looked worn. And I think that it's almost this idea of things that are so luxurious that they don't look luxurious. Mm -hmm. Well, this, the ultimate, this like, was shot. The campaign was shot at Chatsworth House as well, which has a huge kind of history within um, liter literary hi history. Can you get the campaign? Up? But yeah. um, also, you know, you had a Burberry show inspired by Virginia Woolf's Orlando. Yeah. So you've yeah. got they're quite similar in a way, Burberry and Gucci mm -hmm. in their vision and what they're doing. But with that added dash of kind of Italian flair or whatever it might yeah. be, this is kind of the glitzier the sister to, to, yeah. to what Burberry is, is doing, I would say. So they, they, and in a nice way, I think they both sit quite well together yeah. as they have those ruffles and those kind of silhouettes yeah, I, and those characters. I never look at Burberry and think I want it. 
mm. anymore. Do you look at this and like? Yeah, I look at it and I'm like, it's shiny and. But do you know like, it's because there's more stuff? It's what we said. Like, I find it hard. What, no, look like, at the Burberry campaign. Yeah, it looks so fey and like mm. the. It looks. You're actually right, they're the same type of principles, right, like in Englishness. Mm. But I look at the Burberry campaign and it looks very soft and fake and like whatevs. And then the Gucci one is so rich, it almost looks cinematic. Yeah. Like yeah. the one, you, it actually is cinematic mm. because they have captions. Have you seen the, the ad campaign with yeah, the captions yeah, yeah, at yeah. the yeah. bottom that says relentless buzzing sound? I was like, oh my God. I feel like I'm in a one car wine movie yeah. and like there's stuff going on, but it's an yeah. immersive sensory experience when you look at a Gucci campaign. I'm like drawn into the picture mm. and then you have the caption, relentless buzzing sound. And I'm thinking what it feels like to be in front of a fairground carousel at night yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. With the Burberry, it's just a flat image yeah. with two young. white, very, young and very, soft very and white and people, by the way. Yeah. Two very white, skinny, pale English people just stood by a statue or something. Being English. Mm. Just mm. like whatever. But also, this I is think like far more with, those, with those other brands, a lot of what happens is their art directors tend to work in house. Yeah. And actually, here you have Chris Simmons. Christopher Simmons. Chris did Gucci. Chris did Gucci. Oh, hey, Chris. Chris did this. <laughs> Chris, who we know. <laughs> Chris did, um, did this and mm. worked with Glenn. So you have that, that outsider. So funny. Imagine if I said that was so shit, he'd be texting me. <laughs> you have that outsider perspective, which I think you do have when you're, yeah. when you're not in house and you're not in yeah. the brand. And I think that's one of the issues, although this isn't about Burberry, but I think oh, that's I one of the things that they struggled with because yeah. it's all in house, it's, it's all, all so in-house. controlled. Yeah. It feels like it's all done. I've said this before, but it feels like it's all done through market research. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah. these people have said this. So we have to do this. Not trusting your instincts of so creativity. This feels Can a bit more free and a bit oh, more. So well, good. I think this, they're, they're trying to change things up at Gucci, so that there's like way more freedom to what they do to the imagery to the yeah. style. Kind of like <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. What? They're just scared, a bit scared at the moment, I think. Mm. So it's all very safe. Whereas this is like, but just feels fun. Also, Burberry mm. just haven't had that same. I feel like we have Gucci Burberry off now, but like. What's good about Gucci is they've had so many hit products as well. You know, there's a little loaf, the little um, loafer shoe that they did with the small heel, with the tassel Smashings. front and the double G. Everyone's worn that. And then there's also like a million bags that everyone's got. You know, and they've been really good at like lots and lots of it product. And I just don't think Burberry's ever quite managed to to do that mm. in the same way. But they've I just got. It's a bit San Laurenti in that sense. Is there's so much stuff. Like, you know, there's like rings, there's costume jewellery, there's... There's a way, there's entry everything. point for every level of person in the yeah. brand, essentially. And I think when, you know, if you look at it from a business point of view, that's what they are, huge commercial brands mm. that have to have different entry points for all those levels of consumer. And to me, one of the most successful thing, which we touched on earlier, um, that Marc Jacobs did, and now you're getting that same street sensibility mm. with this, is the collaborations with artists. Like, yeah. I think that actually, if you look at someone like Burberry, they're probably not doing enough of that. Yeah. They're not, they don't do anything which makes, which when resonates they do, it with a different cynical. consumer. Yeah, it feels yeah. Well, what, well, what would be an equivalent of the Gucci ghost? What has Burberry done? I'm trying to think. They, they do more like music, they try and do yeah, like music. music but stuff. actually collaborating with an artist to convert yeah, it into a music. print. So Louis Vuitton did that so well yeah. that every time, whether it was Richard Prince or yeah. Murakami, I you'd be like, I've got to have that. Yeah. And now I feel like that's what Gucci's Stevens gonna Charles, do yeah. that. And it's that's I what's gonna that keep it you, relevant. It makes you feel like you're getting a limit. There's something about it that makes it feel limited edition yeah. and very of the moment. So you're like, buying into that mm. moment and if you don't get it and it's also that thing of like urgency yeah mm. if you don't buy this now it's yeah. going to disappear like it's yeah. this season and that's it because everything else you feel like well it'll go on sale yeah. and then yeah. they'll do another season yeah. that's also one thing they're very clever about is like not putting the brand on sale like been, i think they're, yeah. they're oh God, it's so really good me. clever <laughs> and so annoying but it's really good team <laughs> effort you know we're talking about glenn and all the image making but it's also just like how they've how they've put together a lot of the way they're retailing it and selling it and merchandising mm. it is really clever as well. I think they probably realise they don't need to right now no. because it's so in demand. I yeah. reckon it's, again, it's the same with all of those brands that are of the moment, the it bag, the it shoe. They don't go on sale because they know they can mm. get rid of it. Mm. But then in everyone else. Here's the thing that I want to say that I'm interested Oops. in. One of them is going back to 
the artist thing that you mentioned. I think one thing they're really, really clever about, I know everyone's obsessed with digital content at the moment, but they do a lot of interesting projects on their, like, their Snapchat and their Instagram, and they often do quite considered, thought through collaborations there, where there's actually no product to buy, but they're doing something interesting that people talk about or share. And I think Can that's good. Can you tell because I don't have Snapchat. Don't know, so no. if you go on their Instagram, they did this thing with like um, lots of different d digital artists, so like Claudia Massey, people like that, where they came along and it was, it was y way back. And they did um, these little Instagram kind of like reimaginings of certain, can I just pull my mic off? No, uh, certain logos, uh, certain graphics. And I thought what was interesting about that is that you didn't have to buy into anything. If you were just a kid that liked Gucci, you could see that and share it. And I yeah. think that's clever because yeah, a lot yeah. of these collaborations, I think the problem is people have started to see them in quite a cynical way where they're like, oh, it's just another way to take an artist's ideas and sell it as products. But actually, and even when they did things like when they got Jared Leto or Harry Neff or whoever to, or they did oh, yeah, Vanessa to take funny, over yeah. their Snapchat, <laughs> like the Vanessa one was hilarious. I think that's quite interesting. It's like they're putting as much thought into like their the brand strategy as well as the but it's, it's editorial but content. But that's in just a way. more long. It's just longer term strategy. As mm -hmm. in, that's commute. They're commute. They're trying to track. Think you think, oh, they don't want me to buy anything. This is just really cool. And then you're like, I love Gucci. <laughs> Nothing. And then you get the not newsletter. Not to buy anything. And then you yes. get a newsletter because they somehow get your. Yeah. It's all and and like actually as a business, like that is one of the biggest things. People don't, you know, they've probably got a whole like probably got ten people just working on their yeah. Instagram and ideas because that's how people make money in, yeah. in business now. They and they have to, you know, get all of their details, find mm. all of their, you know. I don't know, find out what they like, what they don't like, what they're clicking on, what they're clicking through, mm. get them newsletters. That is how they sell things to people. Yeah. It's just a but much cleverer way. But they're smart enough way. to know that if your product is good enough, you don't have to make all your content oh, yeah. about products. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. And that's what's so clever yeah. is it's like it's often Bringing about the aesthetics in, yeah. or the feel or the mood. Whereas if you look on so many other brands' Instagrams, it's just like product after product yeah. after product. And you're like, well, this isn't Michael cool. Michael Kors it's one. Like, but that's funny, it's, it's funny actually because, so it's 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 out, yeah. because some brands do, like, if you go to like streetwear, a lot of streetwear brands, it's literally like, if you go to like someone like undefeated or, or it's just like tr pictures of trainers, everything, they have like, you know, a million, mm. 700,000 followers. Yeah. And like, people don't want to see pictures of it. So it's yeah. understanding your community and like, yeah. Doing yeah. And stuff the mood of your community. And the kind yeah. of people that you yeah. want to attract because, yeah, some brands are literally just putting up picture after picture of product because their customers that's all they want to see yeah they yeah. just want to yeah they just like see like the new trainer or the new yeah. teacher or the new i don't know whatever it is mm. and it just depends on i mean this is obviously they're trying to you know create a cool community that's arty and yeah. into all of these different things so it's really good one thing that I'm it's also good. interested in, I spoke to, um, I've forgotten her name which is really bad, she's the woman who founded The Real Real, can someone Google that for me? She founded the real real. That it's, it's like journalist. it's like um, I know it's really bad. I'm so <laughs> bad with names and faces, which is like the worst quality for journalists. Anyway, um, so she founded the real real, which oh, is basically yeah, like I've the American bestiaire. Yeah. Have you got her name yet? This is really bugging me. I literally spoke to her quite recently. I'm just having a mind blog. Huh? Julie Wainwright. That's it. She's amazing. So she founded the real real, which is like so we have bestiaire in Europe. They have it in America. And she said that. Um, one of the things she's found really interesting about the resale market is how it's making people who do resell stuff really think about their purchases in different ways. Because if you realize if something has no resale value, you're less likely mm -hmm. to invest in the brand. And then she was saying that for a long time, Gucci was an example of a brand that had absolutely no resale value. And she said now it's got like shit hot resale value. But she said also people are selling old Gucci, so like Frida oh, Gucci, bit, yeah. and mm -hmm. people still want it. Because yeah. she was like, it's. And I think that's really, really interesting. And I can't actually really think of many examples of where designers have done that, where a designer comes in and they're so great that the whole brand seems interesting again. Yeah. It's like, it's not Old like when Dior. Raph went to Dior, everyone wanted Galliano Dior again. But this is literally, Alvin I think- Alvin Klein. I actually noticed that. Yeah, that's I get that, you know, Reese that I thought it's like the French yeah. version of Vestia Collective. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's more just vintage. It's not, vintage, it's yeah. not resale. And they suddenly, like at the announcement of him, yeah. suddenly they had loads of amazing 90s Calvin. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah this is that's awesome. Interesting. Yeah. That's and it really is, yes. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's kind of captivating like that specific time when that brand was at the height of what it was great at yeah. and then getting someone in. To but do that's similar. another thing that's so interesting about what he does. This, I know there's a big thing constantly about heritage and history. 
but I think even more so because like these resale sites are actually like huge, huge business now. And I think it's it is massive. affecting how people are shopping like quite significantly. Yeah. And I think it's, in, it's again what we were talking about with timing. It's just the right timing where he came along and played with like history and heritage and pulling bits from the archive mm. and and that just suits this retail climate, which actually I don't think is that suited to like new, 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 new mm -hmm. season like. Mm -hmm. It seems a bit cooler now when you see someone wearing something really great that you know is from a couple of years ago, and, yeah. and he makes clothes that could be like that. So yeah. not but seasonal. I think that's at all. to do with globalisation too, because it's been <laughs> such a long time now where you could, you could go to, I mean, anyone, Prada or wherever, and spend yeah. like a couple of thousand pounds on something, and then go to New York and go out to a party and there's five people wearing the same thing as you. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you know you what I mean? What? That's why you, it's about. No, you're right. You're right. Because when you said earlier about going to Portobello Market, I, <laughs> That's I, why I see you yeah, <laughs> every day. Um, I live opposite the market, and when like Gucci started to become popping again, I did go to the market with that eye in mind, yeah. and I bought a dress that is pretty much could be a current dress. Yeah. That Gucci green with tiny thin stripes with chains in between the stripes oh, that's cool. and it's like 70s button down and I was yeah. like actually I feel really relevant yeah right now for this and the same same with a do. long brown leather coat and I yeah. think that maybe what's missing right now is and part of the reason I love him like I said earlier is it reminds me of being at college like yeah. when you're at St Martin's and everyone's like pulling in all these really heavy literature references and film and all of this and just making a mishmash yeah I, it does make me think about when when I, I was at college something would be relevant but we'd all scramble to find a cool vintage version yeah. or like a random something in Camden Market mm. and you d you actually were a bit of a mug if you went and bought all the stuff yeah. yeah do you know what I mean you were like oh okay you just got sold to yeah. it was far more interesting if you took a theme and a mood of the season yeah and interpreted it in your own way and that's my only worry about when brands are this successful at providing everything is you don't you lose your creative thought to be able to convey as a brand yeah encourage this new generation of shoppers to be like okay this is the base but then mix it with this but and then that. do you not think it's so broad that i almost think like because like i dress in a quite a boring way i wear black all the time and quite tomboyish but i i have gucci stuff so i'll wear like the little shoes or the loafers or whatever so I'm not like a girly girl, but, but they have enough products have to, yeah, you to do that. To, like you yeah. can but I mean, mix like, it you into don't your have own. to buy a whole outfit. Yeah, you yeah, could yeah, wear it if you're a Cellini yeah. girl who yeah, wants to look really minimal. Buy a bag could, yeah, the loafers. You know, those backless loafers, not the ones with the yeah. fur. Yeah, yeah they're just nice and simple. They're so yeah. chic. But I find the way that they like when they do it. Like I said, going back to the event, it's like everyone wearing it. Yeah, just I almost prefer it when it's not head to toe. I like it when someone's got like a weird little thing on or something, and then you know it's from there. Should we look at the show? I'd like to have sure, a look at what we've done. So the, it's quite hard to, I was just on Instagram and everyone who was there, um, he's like filled the room with like red smoke. So it's actually quite hard to, <laughs> to see. see like a lot of people, it looks, you used the word cinematic before and I was like, it's kind of amazing. This is super cinematic. Very surrealist. It's quite funny because everyone, you know, when it's Fashion Week, you always see that like glut of really blurred, bad runway pictures. It's like <laughs> these are like even worse because no one can get through the smoke. And the collection's called Magic Lanterns. It's called Magic Lanterns, and the main quote is Nabokov, so Lolita's author. Um, it's not a quote from Lolita, I don't believe. Uh, talking about literature was not born the day when a, a boy cried wolf wolf came running from out of the Neanderthal Valley with a big grey wolf at his heels. Literature was born on the day when a boy came crying wolf wolf and there was no wolf behind him. So I guess it's all about this idea of imagination, storytelling, fantasy. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, interpret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. You, like, I, get, I guess it is that thing of like, you don't need to present Sorry. something so literal that yeah. You're not leaving anything up to your customer to yeah. figure out what's going on. Yeah. But I think he's quite, because he uses so many different symbols, it's like you can always read something into something, you know, whoever you are, like whether it's a bee or a bird or a letter or whatever. It is really dark and smoky. It was, everything was pink. <laughs> And like pink mirrors. It's so 70s though. I mean, the whole thing is so 70s. It's like I love it. 
but it's so it's fun it's like so dress up isn't it mm. yeah. i mean you feel like if you were going to that party it would be a good time mm. oh my god that's it there's no lights more lights <laughs> i thought more lights were going to come on no wow. do you know what's so funny that's just like ultimate confidence, isn't it? I, I know. <laughs> don't even need don't to need, need people don't to see just it. Just swing yeah. my dick around. <laughs> don't even need to see it. Okay, more loafers with a big platform. Like those are cute trousers. I mean, you know, I would sell, You know, I'd wear those. You wear it in a different way. Really but it's quite them. refreshing to see a show where it looks really mad on the runway rather than yeah, looking really, true. really boring on the yeah, runway. Yeah. No, it's very. We were talking about it earlier. I mean, it is. A lot of this is styling. He's yeah. like he's an amazing stylist. Yeah, you but know, then that's it's, part of what this is. It's styled across everything. I think that's yeah. what I find so great. There's a lot of brands who do a really well-styled runway show, but the stores aren't interesting, or the Instagram okay, yeah. looks shit, or you, you know, love it as a whole but offering. It, it is. It's, it is almost like it's a film. You know, like the whole thing is a film. It's like mm -hmm. he's made his character, and then she's everywhere, and like everything. It's every and I detail. guess that's very modern because it's actually really modern. you need to do that now because that's the way people interact with brands. Yeah, with like online, social media, stores, everywhere. Yeah. Omni Everything channel. has to be, it's yeah. omni-channel omni shopping. Omni-channel omni shopping. Omni shopping. Omni shopping. I it's think that's that that all the time, <laughs> omni-channel shopping. I think that the best, or my favorite designers, not even designers, my favorite creatives full stop, people who are contributing to culture in any way, are the ones who have such a, um, like tunnel vision. Yeah. They're my favorite. Like whether it's a film director well, or you think of like designer. Wes Anderson or yeah, Tim Burton I'm or obsessed like that, with yeah. people where they are so good to the point where I can predict what it's what going it's to be like, because yeah. what it is is you're attaching a feeling like a sentiment to something an object so that if I went if I like I saw that dress at Portobello like that dress could be nothing other than making me feel Gucci because mm. your vision is so strong mm. and I think mm. that that's really cool and we said, okay, he's going to keep doing this, he's going to keep doing this, because that's his vision, but actually that's quite sick. Like, well, I think to be a good designer, actually, you have to, stick you to, have to have something that's recognisable to you. Yeah. You have to create a vision, otherwise anyone can do it. And I think, you know, when people don't succeed in their own brand, it's because you can look at pieces that they've done and say, like, I don't, this doesn't look like anyone yeah. or anything to doesn't me. Yeah. Or but it looks have like have Balenciaga three seasons ago. Yeah. That's another thing where you everything looks borrowed. You, know, you yeah. have to have an identifiable aesthetic for people mm. to buy into your brand, otherwise it could be anything and why don't they just mm. go somewhere else and find it there, yeah. you know? I also like it because it reminds me of the glory days of Medium Kirchhoff. You know, it <laughs> takes me back to like how good those shows were. I like it because it just looks so like aristocratic. Yeah. European aristocratic. It makes me just think of like grand tours and people who were enabled to travel and pick up mementos from yeah. all over the world because they had the financial freedom to do so in an era that might have been three centuries ago yeah. or 30 years ago. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, they use a lot of those emblems. You know, like in those portraits, they used to put like exotics. So they'd yeah. often be painted with a pineapple because it showed so, that they show, had the show, money show, to travel. Yeah, you had and then he'll to put travel. stuff like that. Same thing. There. It's like tiny motifs of in the know. Yeah. It's almost like the equivalent of like a Smyson notebook or something. If you see that tiny little flash in someone's handbag, you're like, okay, I know what you're about. Yeah. And it's like all of those tiny things, those little motifs and emblems, it's that aristocratic way of saying, okay, I know that you've been to, you know, Bombay. Yeah. I know <laughs> that you've done that. But that's, that's the circles of yeah. that period. Do you, you know what I mean? You mentioned cinematic and to me this, it looks, it's like costume. I don't yeah. really yeah. see yeah. it as fashion. Yeah. It's a very costume. And one frustration I do have with Gucci, just to break the love in a bit, is that <laughs> it is yeah. fun, but it's fun in the most kind of, these, these kids are not having fun. These models look so unhappy. And I kind of wish there was more of a Sonia Raquel yeah. feeling yeah. to the yeah. actual presentation. These yeah. kids should be running, like in the, 
that you know Glenn Lutzford's well, film with their running. So it's so like these. Yeah. This is not fun. This is almost quite perverse in the way that you've got these models dressed like this, walking really seriously. This dress up ten and bounds kind of thing. But I like that in a way do because you know, I, I, I kind of want it to be more fun though. I kind I of want them smiling. I do smiling love that campaign where they ran and they were all smiling. But I think there's something about the show. Again, it goes back to this confidence of his, where it's like it's not really. It's about the characters, but it's never really about the models. He doesn't use big girls. That's he stayed point, away actually. from those like you, you can't know, close your eyes and picture a yeah, you, you picture the look. You don't the picture the model. Right it's it's weird looking. It's not. Yeah. It's well, not like classically mm. beautiful. Again, it's like eccentric, eclectic. But he covers them, he makes them not even yeah. look Yeah, but his Identifiable. models are kind of young and prepubescent. You know, they haven't quite developed yet. Mm. So they re you do have the Gucci body, mm. which is a body mm. that is not yet gangly and uh, yeah. grown. Yeah, gangly and kind of flat and boyish or awkward. girly. You know, this, yeah, this that's, kind that's, of... There's an awkwardness. Absolutely. Mm. And I think that is, for me, not... I'm not, I'm not quite you think sure that's about not that. Yeah, it's modern. funny. I, completely, no, I agree not. with what you're saying actually because there isn't an identifiable Gucci girl and I think that what's interesting is when brands, this happens to brands, so the last time that I probably coveted something was like Dior when I was like I want to be a Dior girl mm. because they Get look the fucking rap. Rap. <laughs> I want to be a Dior girl because it looks so futuristic yeah. and cool but with Gucci it's different it's I want to be in the Gucci gang and yeah. I think the the that is actually a stronger position to be in yeah. here to to set a tone that you want to be part of a gang yeah. because mm. really the entry point for a gang is actually quite easy because it is just like mm. the mic it's the signet ring or it's yeah. a, it's something that shows that you're part of this community and by not yeah. highlighting a single girl or a single yeah. type of girl. You're right, because that, that girl is, I also think it's quite um, aristocratic old. They tend to be very alabaster, mm. high cheekbones, high foreheads, a bit weird looking, but it's the same thing like a royal painting of mm. 200 years ago. Yeah. But it's not so strong that I can't identify with it and be like, do you know what? I want to be part of Gucci gang, so mm. I'm going to get a loafer. Mm. Because with Dior, you couldn't really do that. It was like, yeah. I need the dress, or need I, need, the whole, yeah. I need the whole, whole thing to be that like Dior girl. But I also think what they're clever with is because it, they don't use like they do involve themselves with celebrity, but because they don't rely on the kind of big girls on the yeah. runway, it's, it's almost it doesn't put you off. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not like, oh, I could like, wear that because that's or, it, yeah. or like, oh, it's not me because it's her. Yeah. Like the yeah, girls, yeah. they are relatively anonymous. Yeah, they you know, are. it's like it's it's about the character. It's interesting it's not about, casting, isn't it? Yeah. The first campaign I found quite exciting because I thought. It was more fun. Yeah. Do you remember mm. the first campaign? They were yeah. like having a like, bit of a party on the top. Yeah, and they all yeah. run yeah. along it. Yeah. That yeah, seemed happy in a vibe. But the campaigns often are like, there was the other one where they were like skateboarding and holding yeah. the, yeah. Mm. the Can I just, peacocks. Yeah, the peacock, I thought I was saying flamingo. But, yeah. but those are really royal things. It's like having yeah, yeah. a jaguar. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Having a jaguar in Victorian England yeah. is like so weird. But maybe it's, it's actually, just, it's like colonial. It's like, yeah. yeah it's a bit, bit weird. I don't mind colonial though, in a weird way. Wait, can I just ask, is Kendall Jenner not in this show? No, I don't think so. Okay. No, she's never in the show. Just Why? Checking. Was someone saying I'm so No, I'm just checking because no. we're saying, you know, there are no famous no. faces. We need a Kendall she's alarm. In, for she's, she's in, in the every show. single she's show. Every so I just want to double imagine check that in this show. No, though. you never She'd be like, I'm not wearing the glasses. People. I need yeah. my <laughs> face showing. But I do. Um, that hair's I actually kind of think it's interesting, actually. We're talking about the, the campaigns that can be a little bit kind of frivolous and silly and fun and a different energy. Maybe that is just another thing we were talking about with them establishing themselves as a brand is that the catwalk image is one thing and then it mm. changes when it gets to the campaign and then mm. it changes again when it gets to, I think maybe it's just a way of trying to have these different touch points. Yeah, but I don't know whether you can anymore with these om this omni-channel world. Mm. Omni-channel. Um, I also think they use the catwalk in, in the way that all brands do now where they just want a really good flat image yeah. that they can show to clients in a store and say, this is a runway look. That's why, I think that's also why so much product the same, If you give the same, exactly the same message in every single channel, then you don't need sure. all. You don't need yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying to do like very 3D, like this is this part of Gucci yeah. and totally. that story. 360 yeah. and immersive. Because I don't think that that same customer who like cares about a Gucci ghost phone case is looking at the show and being like, yeah, I want that. Well, they're yeah. looking at it, but then they are going to Portobello and buying yeah. it. Yeah. They're just doing but it themselves. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I, don't, oh, I God, think, 
I think one thing that's also interesting about it is that the fashion show is there, like you see it really in the show notes as well, you know, they've quoted like authors and academics. I think the show is the point where they flex kind of their intellectual muscle. Like Alessandro Michele does have this kind of um, interest in you know, literature, writing, philosophy. And that doesn't really come through in the social media or the campaigns, but I think the show is that point where you get these very um, wordy, quite difficult press releases. But I think that's just because of his culture. I, I think generally the Italians, Italians, the French, yeah, yeah. they have, they have such an inherent it's knowledge so true. that we yeah. just don't have. We don't have British. it. I started doing it at Main Cultural Theory, and in my class, I never finished it. <laughs> <laughs> Some too holes. busy working in fashion. <laughs> uh, in my class, there were loads of Italian boys, and I was get so jealous how they knew philosophers yeah. and yeah. so innately because. And I was like, oh, well, "How do you even know this? We've studied the yeah. exact same time. They're like, we've been doing this since we we're like eleven yeah, years old." Yeah. And I was like, "But Ugh. do you not think if if a lot of designers quoted like three different minds in their press release, you know, you've got." You've got like Russian writer, you've got, who else is in there? You've got uh, French intellectual, I had to Google them, I didn't even know, and I thought I was quite clever, clearly not. <laughs> Bulgarian <laughs> writer. Like, imagine if another designer did that in their press release, you'd be like, what a load of old, <laughs> because it's Gucci, you're like, ooh. Well, I kind of still thought yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I was really? going to say, oh, like, I, I don't know if it's, it's like, of... I love it, and, the, you know, again, it goes back to that student thing of justifying every action with yeah. a, uh, a theory. A so they should, a have, they should a have a theory. bibliography for each yeah, look. Yeah, but I love it that but it doesn't make me think that just because Gucci does it it makes it more important because no. it's just where you are at that point in what time. I do like about it is the press release as a tool which is meant to give us a helping hand in being able to talk yeah. about what we've just seen this doesn't really do that and I like no. that yeah. I do like the fact that yeah. he's just or someone has put this well, out and not really help it's not yeah. really helping us it's in much some more way. about an ethos well, I than it is, is about the clothes like this listen to this line go on I don't way. I think that this completely even before I saw the show I was like this is Gucci look it's unten intentionally unsystematic thought therefore alive I'm like okay so basically it's going to be a mishmash of looks and to you that's alive because it's not mm. systematic like I think this even not just for this collection is very Gucci some yeah. of the things that they were saying to destroy for a moment the stability of perception so that l the lucid conscious is forced to undergo a kind of sensual panic so it's like what's going on now there is a sense exactly sensory, what's happening there is yeah. a sensory <laughs> panic there is a sensory panic because you can't see the fucking clothes <laughs> <laughs> but that's what this does is that you know what i mean release, everyone can interpret it differently it's throwing so, you to something that you're yeah you i know, know exactly you know what, what i'm saying so i feel like actually this is quite accurate distorting mirrors <laughs> altering language the whole thing is exactly what's there and i'm like even if you didn't watch this because as we've said it's quite there is a theme that we've mm. seen, it looks similar to last season and seasons mm. before. It is Gucci, right? This press release. But, it, but the, it refers to everything they're doing, which is not doing anything that's seasonal, non linear. Not doing anything that relates to weather, you know, like. The, the narrative principle well, is non linear. Well, this line as well, the metamorphic <laughs> you know, approach. You're going to make some footnotes. Yeah, yeah. A metamorphic approach, which essentially they've said, and it says, doesn't follow in the wake of tradition. Yeah. Which I think is quite interesting because these clothes to me look, as we've reference before quite quite recognizable traditional clothes i think it's more about the way they operate i think maybe that's what it's trying to imply is this idea that it's going to be kind of disruptive and thought overflows and disciplined <laughs> Thought overflows and I mean, thank you, Gucci. I feel so much smarter. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's like doing an MA with you. Do we like the collection? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I it's mean, really, it's, it's difficult. difficult. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great. There's a bit of Molly is. Goddard in there. I mean, props to her because he's obviously looking at this new generation saying, yeah. of super fun um, I London designers. I don't think he's looking at them. I just think it chimes yeah, so I well think with them. Looking. I think he's not looks. looking to copy, but I think anyone who's interested, as interested he's as he seems to be in on, art yeah. and culture, can't help but look. I yeah. love his own Instagram, by the way, because um, you said earlier about if you can't necessarily get it through in your press release or wherever, I think his own personal Instagram might follow because you kind of see a little bit deeper behind yeah. the thought. It's like a, 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 a different space. You where see like where he's brand. going, yeah. and what he's reading, what his house looks like. Like you've seen these eye motifs yeah. and stuff like yeah. there, so 
what it's did the gone. invitation look like is that on it was like is another of those big card pop things. out things can we have a look at the um catwalk look so we can have a look beyond the mist oh whoa be is that the photos came out really great didn't they? <laughs> they obviously <laughs> got rid Lucky of all the then. smoke at the end of the runway but it is it's just like that I think it is this, I think it's about making the catwalk show a performance again, particularly if you're not going to change up your aesthetic but too much. But that middle dress, if it wasn't off the shoulder, it could be back like that now, mm. right? I mean, it, it's, it's using all the things of the moment mm. and that vintage you think, I mean, it looks very him, but there's lots of things in there that, you know. But I think his aesthetic isn't because of the clothes. You know, we were all saying it had a particular style. The clothes are like 30% of that. The style mm. comes from like him, how he dresses, how he communicates, things like this press release, the way the stores now look, the work, things they have on their Instagram. The clothes, it's like lots and lots of individual pieces and it's so mixed that actually, they're just one aspect of it. It's well, like, so he's like a curator. Yeah, yeah it's a like designer. a group collage of ideas, isn't mm. it? Yeah. But, but That's it's very clever to do it like that in this way because it means that they've got so much, it goes back to what I was saying before, there's so much product that can appeal com to completely different people. Mm. You can drop the product consistently and it feels like there's always new stuff. You're never, that could sit in a, in a store alongside the men's collection from, because this is, this is the first time they're mixing it, but before they obviously had a men's show, now it's like them together. So it could sit alongside that, it could sit alongside the season before, you could drop in you know, your cruise, yeah. your pre, or a special collab, and it's never gonna look like, you know sometimes when you go into a store and it's right before the season's gonna change it, it looks mm. really old. Like, even a seasoned fashion journalist would not be able to, I think, tell Pinpoint you which season, season. that was well, So that's what we were, I was, we were just talking about downstairs, is like how the seasons have changed and the buying's changed and how resort is, was, and kind of is, obviously is still, but it's such a huge part of buying, but then, you know, it stays on the shop floor till June and then mm. spring comes in the middle. Yeah. So they have to sit alongside each other. people literally give Otherwise a shit when they're buying? I don't think any... No, no, I'm sorry, I'm talking about buyers, yeah, like store buyers, buyers point like for wholesale. I mean, maybe it's so weird they don't that sell that system, wholesale. But I, don't know. I find the system so weird still to this day, yeah. That, it is like, weird. I think that's what's so... killed retail. But I think yeah. some yeah. people do care. Like, I was speaking to Rosanna Faulkner, who did this business director with Matthew Williamson, she was saying that they have noticed, like, British and maybe European don't care at all, but she said American shoppers a lot of the time they will say wait so is this spring summer is this new season they need hand holding like... through style that's why <laughs> i think that right. british and european will pick something up from yeah. 10 years ago like they'll pick something mm. up from today and yeah. wear it with the same but confidence but i yeah. think americans need to be like knowing that this is is new the look yeah. from mm. blah 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 but that's what's so ironic about this is it's like new season new season new season gucci's in but then it looks like it could be like 40 years old and i think that's there's this big irony to that like obsession with the old because it's like you're selling an old idea in this schedule of fashion which is obsessed mm. with something that's it is strange but it's also again it, it kind of is like this even like like Saint Laurent was like it, it's it's stuff that you can get yourself it's, it's for people sometimes it's for people who don't know how to dress like this who mm. can't find this themselves mm. so he's like if you don't know what to do here it is i also think we have a very london perspective on that because we say you could dress like this yourself because we do have access to things like amazing vintage shops and portobello road but i think in a lot of like this is a global brand in loads yeah, of those they countries don't they don't have true. a vintage market you yeah, know they don't Anna. Have... No, I just chill mean... with the vintage. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Some girl in Shanghai. Some girl in Shanghai. I bet Shanghai. they have better vintage Can't in Shanghai than they have here. Yeah, they probably Can't do. Can't go down to Portobello Market. But it's just not Orlando an ethos, Chicago. you know. There was like that vintage boom that made vintage cool and vintage well, was a trend in itself. That's why best, yeah, all these things have started online yeah, because yeah, actually yeah, true. everyone is obsessed with vintage and yeah. that's what Can they're I doing, they're buying it online. Do you know what will be far more exciting about this cycle of fashion and what's cool and vintage and new is when all of those resellers like Vestiaire the Real Real they'll have such incredible data yeah. that they'll be able to predict who the next Gucci well that's is. what the Julie, yeah. like, Julie that's from what the Real Real said she said that now brands Come are approaching to them, them yeah. to work with them at f for I their data it's fascinating. Again, sorry to talk about Portobello again. <laughs> but are you like, oh, let's do that. I'm getting paid by that. <laughs> You're um, like, damn, Portobello. You go, no, seriously, when you go there, when you go on a Friday, I, when I was at WGSN, I used to go there and talk to all the store owners because they know what's happening in the yes. market. And mm. they, and a lot of designers are going there yes. to look at what's yeah. going on. So it's like this weird cycle. cycle that, yeah. It's like chicken and egg. Like, where's it starting? They are like kind of finding things that are of the moment, but they're also finding things that 
like the, the, the normal consumer wouldn't know was of the mm. moment, and they feel what's going on way before everyone else. So designers are going there to see what well, those designers buy pieces and, yeah. and yeah. replicate yeah. totally. yeah. So yeah. I worked in Camden Market when I was 19, and it was probably my most formative period in terms of understanding how customers and fashion and brands like all work together for vintage and new. Mm. So we would have Ralph Lauren's design team come to this vintage, yeah. come to our store and basically buy things and ask. And I became really shocked to understand about how the store owner would create trends. Yeah. And like mm. no one would know that he... That's where it started. Yeah, from. and it like Based freaked me Based on what out. he selected. Like, based on what them. he selected. Yeah. So the idea of going, he would go to wherever, Vegas or whatever vintage, like big shows. And let's say that there was a whole booth of kilts. So he would be like, yeah, I'm gonna get those because they're cheap right now and kilts are always in in winter. But then he'd bring them back and he'd cut them micro short and then suddenly like that is a trend because loads of people mm. are buying them. And I, I think that although it is good and exactly right, Anna, that the market traders know the next thing yeah. because they have a feeling for it or they mm. may inform it with what they buy, data can do that quicker. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly, like, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's, yeah. it's like, it's that the best, yeah, I think it's, well, it's a mix of they're not it's curating. human, it's human the and machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only difference is someone, something like Vestier is just they're just taking stuff from like if you want to sell your stuff, you can put it up there. So yeah. they're not curating it, whereas storeholders are mm. they're like a buyer for vintage. I you know, also but think people are like buying. Every will. designer goes to a vintage. I think that's yeah. the thing as well. That is, it's probably quite unspoken about in fashion, the designers I think have got more candid about it recently. It's like, that is a huge part of their oh, design yeah. process mm -hmm. is sending like teams, teams. or going yeah. themselves to vintage stores, yeah. buying stuff and literally copying. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny because you sit at Fashion Week and you see all the street style stuff and you know, and people talk about like, what's generating the trends. And it's like these girls outside the shades wearing all these clothes. And you think, you know, you're Not the anymore. very last end. You yeah. have nothing to oh do with God, actually what's so when and it, But you think right back. That so is how funny. it started. I mean, yeah. now people who are wearing clothes at shows and getting clothes craft arts, I mean, I don't think they've got anything to do with trends, but originally, like, you know, 10 years ago, we, we were doing street style photos of everyone that I would do at like the art shows, mm. at trade shows, because those were the industry people and they knew what was going on and they they were like styling up stuff and finding vintage and they look cool, like now. They look way better. Well, now people just wear as bright, there, you know, they wear bright better. stuff so they get mm. photographs. Street style, freeze art yeah. to me, has much better dressed people yeah. than yeah. London Fashion Week. Well, yeah. this is diff yeah. It's a business it's now though, that part of London Fashion Week. Like a lot of those girls, like that's how they make money they're now. Paid they're getting paid Do we see many people though wearing this sort of Gucci look but not Gucci how much do we think it's changed the high street Good and what point. people are wearing because I'm gonna I don't often I'm gonna see go to our team of St Martin's students oh, <laughs> are there kids team. at college who dress like this who like because you're all quite minimal do you have kids at college who like try and make the Gucci look no one's dressing maximalist that's interesting, isn't it? I think, in a way, that people like would only like because if you do it a bit wrong, you just look really stupid. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, and if people are like, "What are you wearing?" Like Gucci, people are like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. If you're like, mm, "It's like a weird thing." I mean, <laughs> like, it's it's like, 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 no one at school's like, wearing those from... loafers. No one at school's wearing loafers. They can't afford yeah, them. Yeah, they can't afford them. When I was at St Martin's, my first day of school, I'll never forget it. I remember entering the Charing Cross site and a girl was walking up the stairs in those Chloe boots. Do you remember the knee suede yeah. moccasin yeah. boots? And I was like, how did she afford that? Yeah. I just got my student loan and paid all my rent with it. And I just saw them in Vogue and it just made it real that I'd moved to London and now I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And I think you've got to have people at school who do subscribe a little bit to it, but mm -hmm. I guess if they can't afford it, because it but is also, really I mean, if you wore this to school, not the whole well, thing, but yeah. the vibe. <laughs> but just, I don't know, I just don't know how much kind of Topshop and all those other retailers, I'm not sure how much they have. I bet they have. Well, I'm I sure they have, have but it has it. Would all be like but I don't know, actually, if you go in like Zara and Topshop, it's it's still more San Laroni than it is Oh, I don't Gucci. think so. Zara's got so many of those green lace Gucci dresses yeah. that we have. But it's like, it's like one oh, right, piece, yeah. whereas like, I feel like if you go in Zara, it's like, it feels like Vetmore. 
at the moment. There's like yeah, loads of weird shirts oh. back to front. They've not yeah, gone yeah. for this. But it's yeah. not like it doesn't. If you look at the window, it's still quite minimal. Quite, I guess it's really hard actually, probably for the oh, high street to copy. I was going to say, yeah, you, you wouldn't do like this. But also, I, I feel like the high street. Like to do it. <laughs> don't you think the high street now is has it's such a strong identity? They don't need to lift entire um, like brands like they used to before because I think in Zara they have done this to an element because mm -hmm. in the window now at Zara stop on this see those red tr tracksuit pants with the stripes mm -hmm. they're in the window at Zara right now mm -hmm. so I definitely do think they do but it's a combination of this and like you said Vetement it's a bit yeah. of like a bit of both. I think designers will look at all of them and see what works for their customer. Because I know we talk about Gucci's influence on fashion, mm. as in fashion, the industry and mm. magazines and editorials, but I think it's always interesting to be able to assess a designer's vision on how actual yeah, people on the I streets agree. are dressing and mm. Vetmore have done that, I believe, from what I look mm. at and where, what I see every day. You know, that kind of the sportswear and the exaggerated mm. um, I think proportion it's easier for more than this. To do yeah. yeah. It's and it's cheaper. Cheaper. accessible. Yeah, yeah, it's way more accessible. So this I, still needs a little bit of skill, maybe. In but I think this results. will have a broader influence on aesthetics. Like, I feel mm. like Vetmore is very fashion. You see, yes, you're right. If you go into a high street store, it, it's much easier to replicate in a kind of just purely clothing fashion. Clothing so it's a you can but, wear a tracksuit. Exactly, but I imagine them. this okay, having an impact <laughs> on like music and art and like this cluttered magpie collector obsessive thing. Taking that. It's now just going to, I think it's bringing that notion back a bit. I think you'll see it in homeware, you'll see it across it, because it, yeah, it's an aesthetic, it's not, a, it's not fashion, it's like a sensibility of being mm. obsessed with old things, obsessed with collecting, mm. obsessed with nature, and I think it's, it's kind of beyond fashion in some way, so I can imagine it having like a, a broader effect than just like what Zara mm, like and Maybe Topshop better do. because the design of what they're doing is not I mean, I don't, this is more, there's more design in this. There's more mm. richness. There's more cinematography. There's more mm. feeling. And it's like you can imagine Vetmore what the girls like, smell like. You know, they smell yeah. a bit dusty <coughs> and like also powdery. Also, well, like, it's the celebrities associated with it because the people who are being inspired on the street aren't necessarily looking directly to the brands. Yeah, mm. it's the celebrities True. wearing those brands and rappers wear those brands. Mm. And maybe not as many rappers are wearing Gucci. Therefore, it's not going to be something that you'd see as much. On I the don't street. think any of the Kardashians have worn Gucci. Well, there you go then. It's completely irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's true because what it is is that if Terrifying. people access brands at different points, right? But major point right now is celebrities, mm. and it's not the celebrities that we would think of celebrities who have a reason to be famous. It will be different points of celebrity where maybe. They are a bit irrelevant, but I just don't think right now there is a celebrity whose style is this style. But also, you know, it's, mm. it's when they started, when he started, and there was like all this amazing press, and everyone came back from the shows like, oh my god, everyone's obsessed, and everyone started kind mm. of trying to wear crazy clothes, and then everyone took a step back and like, oh, this though. Mm. Like, are people actually going to buy, apart from the 10 editors? But then it's done, the sales figures are good. You know, but strong, are they? That's yeah, what I was yeah. going to ask. Like, yeah. has it worked? Yeah. I mean, you feel like it's worked, but has it on a, like, a major what scale? What was interesting is even actually before a lot of his products had hit, so going back to just when the appointment was announced and the first collections had happened, it, it's kind of what we were saying before about reinvigorating the brand is sales were up even yeah. just on I guess like the classic I think they were probably doing stuff. very badly as yeah. well yeah yeah I just also think there's more product like the product yeah. it is that model for a lot you know for so long it was just like bags and shoes were the drivers but I they've been very good at getting into everything it was, before. It was very oh, sexy was it was very attractive like, it was very remember the, the Tom it. Ford so dry Tom Ford Gucci and then it was like yeah. Oh, oh my god. god, I'm here for you. I liked oh. it. There was some collections. It was 60s. It was I kind know. Of, there were some collections that were great. I that just don't even pastel, remember tailoring. It. But there was that colour boots. blocking collection that like defined that whole season. You know, she did like the bright when Cheryl Cole wore it. She did like the bright <laughs> turquoise <turquoise's laughs> with the orange, oh with the purple. And Literally, that was, like, you're everywhere. talking, and I have no what idea what you're talking about. The last Cheryl thing Cole. I remember before this, if I close my eyes and I think Gucci before this, Tony Braxton. I think. Feathered jeans. Like cut out dress. Feathered jeans. Yeah, I think of Tom Ford 
I remember you, my you were first missing. Day of school. I actually went yeah. to all of those. No, 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 shows. I'm missing. Yeah, I'm missing. I don't, you don't remember it. See, you were there. I mean, I it was like, like a version of. It was like not as good. There was as nothing. Before, it was very bright and shiny. Yeah, yeah. but it's just I, like I don't yeah. remember it. The last I time Gucci resonated with me was by wearing eyeliner like Tom Pichu because that was the style and having yeah. a side part in because I could bite into the beauty element of the show yeah. and having a white coat with a black belt because I'd seen it in a magazine yeah. and I've got to say. I was 14. So that was a long time ago. I think ago. another, what's like. also really interesting and quite a good example of the change is the 20th anniversary issue of Wallpaper at the moment has Gucci, a Gucci cover from 96, it might be. Yeah. Um, so they've re ran a kind of old yeah. cover and on top, they've reshot the kind of man and woman couple yeah. in the same way with a different photographer with current Gucci. So you literally yeah. lift the page and you can see cool. that, yeah. that change. And what, of course, right now is that out? Right now. Like, and the one, the Gucci, the Gucci, <laughs> the Frida's Gucci is not in the middle. Yeah. So obviously go. Tom yeah. Ford. I don't uh, think she did a bad, there no, were but I don't think she was good. really allowed to do. But I think it it's what we're saying, saying is like, it's, it. not, it's not identifiable. Like she obviously no. didn't have no, no, no. such a strong kind of but I think she played her role as a designer differently. She saw herself as the keeper of a house who was working too brief. You know, yeah. whether it's his innate confidence, whether it's a different relationship between him and, the, and, and sort of, you know, the business infrastructure of Gucci, this is much more Alessandro Michele. Yeah. And I think for her, like different designers do it differently. You know, sometimes yeah. they treat it as like they're working to a brief and they're there to keep a house going and that they work to that code. Whereas this, I think he's like, no, I'm just going to do what I want. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He could be doing this as his own between label. men and women working, eh? Yeah. No, <laughs> of course. Do you think so? Well, just the, hearing you describe it, that like she's the keeper of the house, but she's not a visionary, mm. whereas no, I think it's, it's just. Do you know what I mean? It's I how think, she approached yeah, the brand. Yeah, but it's I the approach, it It's more. like going into a job and approaching it that I'm just going to do my job, or mm. going into a new job, working at I don't know, could be anything. You work at a factory, and like, I'm not only going to do my job, but I'm going to change the way we work in yeah. this factory. And yeah, I just I think, think it's, it's the interesting that you say that. Like, like, you think of Eddie Slimon doing that, and I think it, maybe you're right. It's, a fashion that is. Well, Phoebe did that, Celine. She went in and she yeah, said, true. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's men and women, but I, maybe her. No, her, it just it literally just when you said it. She was just it, like hard just working. Like, she didn't yeah. say, like, but maybe they probably didn't give her the opportunity to do this. Yeah, it was that's, at such that's a low what point. I think it was at such a low point when he came in that they were like, just do whatever you want because mm. we, we need to change everything mm. up a bit. It's about character, isn't it? Thank God everyone isn't a visionary, otherwise things would be really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone would so be fighting true. and not getting on with each other. Well, it's very true. You'd it's, kill us all. It's given us lots of food for thought. Have we missed anything? Is there anything pressing about Gucci that we need Do to Do people say? ask questions? No. no not it says really. cemetery on that oh, belt. It was like a does it? Or does it say something else? Yeah, it says yeah. Cemetery. It, like mm. it says Gucci, babe. <laughs> on the belt, not on the fan. Oh, I thought you meant the fan. I read it upside down. See, she's rethinking things Gucci. in different ways. She'd wear that fan as a belt. Cemetery. <laughs> I think um, we should do a challenge for next season's Gucci panel. I'm going to make everyone go to Portobello and try and come in their we'll best Gucci We'll all come wearing our Gucci yeah. outfit. Or we'll I'll just go that. to Anna's and borrow something from I, her. No, I, I really want to see this happen. I should have done a green dress outfit, innit? Yeah. yeah, you should have done I want to see this happen. Maybe we can do a thing on Instagram if people think they can put together a really good Gucci look. Yeah, Sons do. Gucci. Looks, okay, I think you've it. just come up with Gucci's next Instagram campaign. Yeah, do you it's want to send Chris a text? Just say, looks like Gucci. And make people wear vintage. Yeah. Hashtag looks like Gucci. There you go, perfect. Yeah. I don't think it's the best brand strategy for them, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be fun for I don't know. It's that confidence again, isn't it? It's the confidence to be like, yeah, you can wear things that looks like look like Gucci, but ultimately you still will have a percentage of people that will still go and buy it. And also what's very clever is, you know, they just redid the perfume advert with the Gucci Guilty one with the Glenn Lutchford, Alessandro McKinney oh, aesthetic. Oh, can I see that? Oh, so that original obviously, one was the original awful. one was awful. Can I see the new Gucci Yeah, you can see the new one. Can you I get the new Gucci Guilty one? I don't one? remember the old one. It wasn't that old. Oh, it was on no, TV it, it until that last old. week. It was, it was on over Christmas and it's like, she gets on a night of and it's that awful thing where it's black and white and then some bits are in colour. Why are perfume ads so bad to this day? Why are people like? Sss, it's always just a girl so and a flower. Dead. It's so weird. Is this the new one? This yeah? is the or new the old one. one. This is oh, the new jammed. one. This is yeah. the new oh, one. I've seen the pictures of the new one. It's like two girls and about and about. Oh, this is completely different as opposed to a girl being chased by a guy. Yeah. 
but it's always two girls and a guy. Why is it never two guys and a girl? She's always got to put up with it. But. but I think it's like a. I think there is a lesbian undertone to this where the girls are in love. Still quite I, safe. I've watched it a few times and I haven't quite found my way back yet. But I, I will get to grips with it. But it's interesting they've reissued that. Obviously they needed to because it was so. Like the aesthetic of the perfume was so, so removed from this. Terrible. But it obviously shows what we're saying that there's lots of people who want to be a Gucci girl, who want something to buy into that feels right. like current Gucci. You know, it is that thing, of course. Like, So he's going to do a new perfume, really? He has to. Well, you think he, I can imagine it being a bit Penn you know, like it yeah. could come oh, with like nasty. a puff where you yeah. have to like, put it, yeah, like that a, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Oh. He's you know, definitely going to do a new perfume, right? But you can imagine like, that's how even you the put your stamp yeah. But also, if you're like creative director and you want to put your stamp on it, the most accessible thing there you're going to be in everyone's house is with the perfume. perfume. But imagine Just if you did like Beauty where it was much more like old little, mm. like, you know, beautiful little palettes and it'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? To change, like Beauty's nice. so boring and so un, you know, you've got that lower, Apart from what? No, but I mean, like, no one's doing anything interesting with like packaging the big fashion brands. Pat McGrath. Because they spend yeah, yeah, but not the big fashion fashion brands. brands. Because they spend this license, huge license companies that are so far removed from the actual house. They make so much money on perfume. But even if they just did occasional little capsules that like actually reflected the aesthetic, it'd be so like imagine if they did this really cluttered eccentric BC thing. It'd be quite nice. Like it'd be more interesting than everything being black Mm. with the logo. But but maybe they'd only sell a hundred, but they. They wouldn't the, the average kind of you know accountant or whatever in Birmingham might not want to buy that. How do you know? Maybe she Maybe likes. Maybe yeah, some will. <laughs> What's wrong with Birmingham? Nothing's wrong with Birmingham. <laughs> um, but those fragrance ads are not really just for your kind of you yeah know, yeah yeah because that's still quite safe to me. It's really, like yeah. the Jared that was that was a short version. The longer one, there are stories. There are twists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are wow. twists. It's still fairly safe, but I'll definitely be excited. We should watch to the old feet. one. Can you get the old? It's got like Evan Rachel Wood. Is that her name? To see if to She's see on. how you could do a perfume in a new way. Like I love the idea of like cap- well, Kenzo. opening a case. Oh, I don't like that. Did you not like caps- that one? Oh, what that the advert? The yeah. girl dancing for the phrase. Right, I, I like I liked it, but I think it's, it's very it's very it's very um. Press. Oh god, is this a review? Press. I think this oh, this might be the men one. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, it's the top one. Is that the one you were just on? Um, or the the second one? It's both of those, I think. Oh, this is so weird. Someone done a review of it. No, no, no. Go. <laughs> oh, oh go. wow! Oh my uh, god! It's like Sin City. Yeah. So on him. It's a red window, though. Can you imagine? Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> <laughs> Why it's would it's you like rip off Sin City in the worst way possible? Did anyone get? But that's the problem is when you license wow. everything out is you can have something like this running at the same time as like <laughs> yeah, that's you know what having Eddie didn't all like the at Saint Laurent. yeah. So it is, it's interesting that his aesthetic sweep is continuing to Why sweep. Why is it still going? <laughs> it's very strange. It's really That's long. It. But so uh, much. And, and the point of that story is... Not guilty. Gucci guilt, guilty gets you laid. Really quickly. In a car. That was the worst advert I've ever You're seen. Gives you a bad back as well, yeah. <laughs> but it's a reminder of how much Gucci has changed. I think that's also really easy to forget. It's like so, so different mm. now, so quickly to what it was. It's quite like, amazing that they let it happen, you know, that they had the confidence in him. But like I said, it might have been that it was just doing so badly that they didn't really know what else to do. I think you also have to remember, it's such a ginormous business. So when you say Gucci doing bad, like it's huge. Like it's the Gucci yeah, group. Yeah, like so losing it's like it's 2%. Like selling exactly. down 2% is massive. It's that's massive. Millions and millions yeah, of yeah. 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 jobs and yeah. Yeah, so I think that that is what's interesting to see that level of experimentation from a house that is that ginormous. So yeah, it's fascinating. Should we give them a round of applause to wrap things up? To our sound.